over the last couple of years I've received questions about how I found my husband or how my husband found me and how to find a husband etc etc and so I thought I would do a video or at least attempt to do a video talking about my thoughts around this topic <laughs> okay so the first thing I'll say is before you get married or before you even start thinking about getting married is you need to know yourself by know yourself I mean uh, first of all, I think there are three categories of people. There are people who honestly would have an amazing life as single beings, as single people, unmarried single people. Um, I believe there are some people who would have a great life as well as uh, people who are in a relationship, maybe cohabbing with someone, but just unmarried. And then there's some people who probably will have a thriving life if they were actually formally married now it's important to understand which one of those three you are or want to be before you just hop into the marriage bandwagon right because we all know that half of marriages in America end up in divorce and the reason part reason I think is because most people don't accept or understand who they are right from the get-go and they just think oh yeah I need to get married I need to get married not everybody needs to get married you can have a great life as a single person or in other types of unions part of understanding um, the type of situation and the type of person you are you are and the, the union you're drawn to is knowing your values understanding the things that matter the most to you are you someone who's religious are you not religious do you what do you envision your family to look like do you want a family what are the things that matter to you the most those questions are important to answer right bef like before you even meet someone you need to know exactly where you are in those answers yourself because you will want to attract people who either complement or reassure the value systems that you have for your life and that you want for your life. Because if you don't think about those things, you're just going to meet someone who's going <laughs> to basically turn you into someone you don't even recognize, right? And so, um, yeah, so know the things that matter to you the most before you even embark on the journey. The next thing is... If you want to meet someone, honestly, you just have to expand your social circle. Try to go to different things. So the type of person you're trying to attract, go to the types of activities that they go to, right? So um, if you have a value system or, a, you know, things you enjoy and stuff like that, you want to probably meet someone in that sphere. So let's say if you are a religious person and you, you go to church, let's say, you probably want to find a church community that, you know, you envision going to with your future mate and so uh, go to church <laughs> go to church and probably you will meet someone in church um, and similarly if you're not religious like let's say if you enjoy reading or if you enjoy playing a certain sport join those types of activity circles so that you can increase your likelihood of meeting those people that's the old school way right this is before internet dating okay so jumping off of that I'd say consider online dating I met my husband off an internet website and to this day it's kind of futuristic to think about but yeah it worked I know some people have had bad experiences with the internet and online dating and that type of thing but in our case it worked out it doesn't always work out but it is a great way to meet people who are normally not in your circle so let's say you're not someone who goes out much in which was my case uh, or you're someone who's more introverted or something like that and or you live in a place where you just don't find the types of people that you want to end up with um, yeah consider expanding your circle by going online and sometimes those people are also in the same situation that you're in so they maybe they also don't go out you know your future husband also doesn't like uh, you know socializing in the traditional sense but he's open to online dating and so online dating does something really remarkable in that on one hand it's almost like you filter your perfect person into your uh, pool of candidates that you match with but then on the other side it also can create this false um like synthetic way of connecting with people so it's important that you kind of humanize the experience by not just talking online in our case i think we talked for just a couple of maybe a week even i don't even know i would have to ask him but i think we spoke for like a week or two before we we met in person so we didn't wait that long uh, before we met in person and I would encourage you to just meet the person you're talking to otherwise you start developing some strange depend like false sense of realities when you actually aren't in real relationship with them that's my opinion so 
online dating is great and then if you have a cultural preference or a racial preference or all these preferences the good thing about online is that you can mostly almost filter uh, your preferences and and my thoughts on preferences to be honest is that um, they're just that some people prefer to date certain types of people uh, some people prefer to date people from their own culture. Some people prefer to date people outside their culture, etc., etc. It doesn't matter why to me. I think that's just life. Um, if it's not hurting anyone, let's just keep it moving. The next thing is, let's say regardless of online or offline methods, I think being approachable is something that's super undervalued these days. I find that a lot of women are so hard and i just like almost like just so defensive on guard all the time and it's like dude just smile bro like just be happy <laughs> you know just smile yeah i'm not sure what happened like women have become so hardened in many ways that we've lost that femininity part of ourselves that soft part of ourselves maybe we've gone through experiences whatever it is but yo just smile a little bit more and just be easy on yourself and so that other people can approach you better and easier as well and you should even consider being the one to initiate conversations when you see people or someone who seems like someone you'd like to get to know um, I was never good at that <laughs> but if I was advising my old self I would definitely say that um, I think gone are the days where men have to initiate that first conversation so you know do that uh, I'm not saying you should lead the courting but I'm saying you know if you're at a game or if you're out there volunteering or whatever hobby you're doing if you're at the church or something um yeah just be open to just saying hi to people and and just being pleasant if that makes sense the next thing is be open-minded i think sometimes especially people who do online dating i find have this preconceived idea of the person they want to meet and the way they need to look and blah 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 life life isn't like that um, sometimes you might have this vision of who you're going to end up with and i can almost assure you from my experience that you will end up with the complete opposite person <laughs> well not complete opposite but um i find that sometimes especially women we spend so much time having this list of values or ideas about the ideal person or ideal job or whatever it is and sometimes just be open-minded don't have too many rigid lists and don't even have lists in my case i know i always joke with my husband that i'm constantly surprised that i ended up with someone like him and i think he must be surprised that he ended up with someone like me too i would have dismissed his type a long time ago i won't say the different things but point is that my husband does not reflect the ideas that i had of myself 10 years ago uh, so the thoughts that i had about my dating partners and that sort of thing my husband is actually not very close to that list uh but yeah life surprises you and you find yourself you know falling for somebody who's not really what you imagined uh and it works out and it's great so yeah just be open-minded about where love can happen and where your future can be um rather than just being so rigid in your ideas about where you want to be if that makes sense the other point that is kind of tied to being um approachable is taking initiative so it's important to realize that we're living in a different time a different era where women sometimes have to actually make that first move because some men feel like unsure whether they should come and make a move because of the climate that we live in certainly in the west um and so it's important to keep that in mind um that some men are really not going to just be as proactive as they previously were um so you need to maybe talk maybe initiate that first conversation first because then that signals to the guy that hey i'm interested and and then he can lead after that so i never had to initiate and i i'm happy that i don't live and i'm not dating in an era where i'm initiating because honestly i wouldn't be that great at it but i honestly think that it's essential in 2024 to be able to, and comfortable and build your confidence to be able to just start conversations and like make that first move not like 
intense move but just move in the sense of like just conversation and just to signal to the man that yes i'm interested please proceed <laughs> if that makes sense apparently according to my husband and some of the guys that i've talked to they say that it is an attractive quality when women actually proactively initiate things so let's lean into some of that initiating we don't have to keep leading the whole way but let's initiate some things the next thing is communicating your intention now in this part of the world so i live in canada and one of the things that i observed when i was dating was that there's this tendency that seems to have spiraled out of control in 2024 is people have this very ambiguous way of dating and existing in relationships i personally am not comfortable with that i've never been comfortable with that so just dating for the sake of dating i've never been that girl um and maybe part of it is cultural like i i think that if i'm if I'm dating you like that, then this is going somewhere. It might not be marriage exactly, but it's certainly not like nothing, if that makes sense. So I think making sure that if your intention is about getting married, it's important to communicate with the person that that is your intention. Not necessarily to be like, hey, we're dating right now and you have to be my husband. But it's just that you should share that vision pretty early on so that for them, if they're not at the same stage as you, um, then you can save yourself time because maybe if you keep dating someone who's not seeing marriage in their own future why waste your own time <laughs> with that person you know what i mean because people don't generally change their their minds about things like marriage right like it's it's something that some people are either yes or no and some people are maybes i was a maybe person and yeah so you don't want to waste your time with somebody who's not necessarily interested in marriage yeah so you can let them know that you know you're interested in a committed relationship and you're open to the idea of being married and then let them kind of tell you what they're thinking from their end that will signal whether you should run or you should continue just enjoying the relationship the hot take that i have tied on to that is that i don't believe that you should move in with somebody you're dating unless you both have the intention of being married or in a long-term relationship i don't i just don't see the point i don't see the value i don't see why people do that in this part of the world i think it's so complicated it makes everything so messy like who gets the couch after the breakup and that's the question i always have for my friends when they get into the relationships like this i never lived with someone until i met my husband and i think that i'm happy that that was never a case i don't i never had to deal with you know who gets the sofa who gets the this and i never had to deal with just all that drama that comes if the relationship doesn't work i think uh living with someone is such a sacred experience and should be saved for someone you want to be with for a long-term relationship i mean yeah there's something magical about that first experience of you know sharing things and like living i don't know sharing a bathroom with someone annoying things but also sweet things right like it's like I don't know save it for someone you actually want to spend the rest of your life with but don't just get into the habit of like moving in with someone just because you think you like each other um, communicate your intentions know what their intentions are or what their vision is and then you know at some point if you both feel like this is going somewhere and they are ready to you know <laughs> propose or whatever then that's when you should move with them that's why <laughs> old person hot take another thing is focusing on compatibility i think when you meet someone or you're dating someone um finding points of connection is so vital in the case of my husband and i we are quite different people and certainly when we met initially we were quite were more different than we are now so um i think it's important if you're dating to find ways to connect yourself to the person you see yourself being with long term so let's say for example they have certain hobbies or a certain lifestyle or certain things like that i'm not saying change yourself to be this new person but i'm saying find interest in the things that you your potential partner has uh, so let's say if your potential partner likes sports find a way to kind of honor respect that part about themselves and then it, it will bring you guys closer so um 
yeah example is my husband loves sports or games and so or marvel marvel is a good one so when i first met my husband i was not necessarily a superhero or super marvel fan like the movies but uh i mean i liked sci-fi type things and i liked um dc and superhero shows and stuff but not to the level that he does or did and so one of the ways was when he would invite me to go watch a movie that's with some of his friends which is like a marvel thing you know if i was someone else i'd say no you can go with your friends and that'll be fine i'll see you on another day but instead i was like yeah cool let's go you know and and similarly i feel like he did the same with me so making sure that you kind of notice the things that matter to your partner or the person you're dating and just kind of supporting that part of them and letting them see that you might not be like a super fan of whatever it is that they're doing but you support and respect that about their lifestyle right and you you might even be surprised that you yourself will find it interesting after some time and yeah it just brings you guys closer another point is cultural understanding especially when you're dating outside your culture and your race i think that it's important to notice and understand and accept that we are different um yes we're similar and etc etc but at the same time there are some real cultural differences that you have to contend with especially if you're trying to date or if you are if you prefer dating outside of your race and outside your culture or certainly like if you live in a city where you don't probably have people from your own culture you are maybe it's not your first preference to date outside your culture but because of where you live or something that's what you get and so yeah so just be honest with yourself and understand from the get-go that when you meet someone from a certain culture what are their culture what is their culture and what is yours how does that work well together and what are the points that don't necessarily <laughs> work well together so an example of cultural difference is that in my culture I feel like our sense of family is so heavy so I am very close to my my family a super super close I talk to my mom like I don't know hundred times a day I talk to my brothers like it's just that incestuous so to speak whereas like with my with my husband and I think a lot more white Canadians are less involved with their families unless maybe they're from a rural uh, community or something like that but I find that it seems to be a very <laughs> Africa certainly there's a contrast in our relationship that way so I think the work there was me understanding for my husband's perspective what that is like for him and then for him to understand that oh yeah my wife you know clearly has all these people in her life and uh, and that's that and then both of us kind of meet each other halfway uh, to not to pretend like it's just normal but to understand that hey this is not my orientation and it's yours i respect it but um this is my boundary or this is not my boundary so just being honest at the get-go and sometimes you might not even know all the cultural things you might have to learn them along the way but most of the time i think we can with the thanks to youtube and all these things we can actually see how other people have experienced interracial relationships or intercultural relationships and then we can learn from that right like we there are a lot of people who share their stories yeah so show interest in their culture show interest in their um the things that their families hold dear and and just respect each other that way so have a respect don't try to converse someone to your own culture and conversely i don't think you should be with someone who's trying to convert you to their culture because we're too grown for that really I guess since we're talking about the intercultural stuff, uh, the other thing is address any potential challenges that you foresee happening because of your cultural differences. So let's say, for example, sometimes when you're in an interracial relationship, uh, you have your families and friends who might be opposed to you guys being together. Pre-think that and pre-think what that means down the road because if you're actually trying to get married to someone and then their family is never accepting to someone who's outside of their race or outside their culture, then that means that you are choosing to marry someone who you're going to potentially have children with and you're just going to be in a miserable family Christmas dinner slash Thanksgiving dinner every single year for the rest of your life like you might not want to do that right and you might not want to bring children into an environment where it's so contentious and you're gonna be miserable anyway I'm just saying 
think as further down the line as possible so think as far as like getting married what that's going to look like who's coming to the wedding what are they going to feel what energy are they going to give to your marriage think about children the kids come in are, the, are your in-laws going to deny their grandkids like all that type of stuff it sounds like super intense to be thinking about when you're dating for marriage but i think all those things matter so that's why you want to meet your husband or your future husband's family pretty early on and his friends because they are going to become your family and they're going to become your friends so you don't want to be miserable because this is this is for life okay <laughs> the next point is of course building a strong connection it's important to know that this foundation when you're still dating someone is the thing that is the best determinant of how you guys are gonna weather the storm after i think if you can date i don't i don't believe that you should date forever in our case we only dated for about six months before we got engaged and i think we're engaged for another eight months or something like that before we're married so that's not that long and i honestly think that after a certain age i think i was 33 at the time I don't think you need that long to date someone that long and this is this ties on to my thoughts about why you shouldn't live with someone you want to get married to I don't think you should spend that that long living together being engaged blah 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 like just just if you sort of assess the values etc etc just go for it <laughs> don't don't spend too much time sassing out people as if you know there's never going to come a time where you're like okay now i know my partner so well and there is no correlation between marriages that work with the length of time they dated there isn't so show me a study so the last thing i'll say obviously is be patient um getting married in my case was not necessarily on my vision board i wasn't opposed to it but i definitely didn't grow up doodling my wedding gown and stuff like that but i i know that for some people it's something that they really think about since they're really really young and i would just encourage you to not make a quick decision it is a lifelong decision whether you end up married for the rest of your life or not it is life-changing so you don't want to just rush into it because you just want to get married take your time with yourself understand who you are understand what your triggers are what you love how you want to be loved and how the capacity you have to love somebody else it's so important like it's important to take the time um, and I think all this tends to happen before you actually even meet your potential partner because I think if you know who you are and you're you're kind of clear about the place you want to be or the feeling of how you want to feel in the future then it makes it easier to attract that type of person into your life and attract that kind of life into your life and so uh, yeah, just be patient with yourself. Yeah, and, and like just don't settle for just garbage just because you want to get married. Settle for someone who deserves you because honestly, gifting yourself to a man is like the biggest gift they'll ever get in their life. Like honest, women are so amazing and I know men are great in their own way, but I think women are really the cornerstone of homes and societies and family. Okay, so I'm going to end this video now. Let me know if you have any thoughts, ideas around how to get a husband, how to date for marriage and that sort of thing. And if you already married yourself, how did you end up married? Um, I ask myself that question every single day and I don't even know the answer, really. I don't know how I ended up here. But, but anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.